I learn a lot from my kids. The other day, we were all out for a walk. My whole family was out for a walk. And uh, my five-year-old started grumbling about being out for a walk. We were only about a block and a half from home, and he started carrying on and, and complaining about how tired he was. And he, and, and he does this from time to time. But I've learned that if I want him to do something, then I can, if I turn it into a game, he'll often do it. And he'll, he'll do it happily, and he'll do it laughing and smiling and carrying on. And so, on our way home, he starts complaining, he starts whining, I say, I'll race you. And he lights up with joy. My name is Ed Trevers, I'm an Anglican priest in the Diocese of uh, Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island. I get to serve in the amazing, beautiful parish of Christ Church Shelburne in the amazing, beautiful town of Shelburne, Nova Scotia. And today, I want to talk to you about winning. Now, I just told you that little story about Charlie. Well, you can't tell with me sitting here, but I'm actually about 6'3". I got pretty long legs. My five-year-old is, he is three foot nine, I don't know, he's a he big kid, but he's small compared to me, and his legs aren't nearly as long. And so when him and I race, he starts pounding the pavement, and I do that thing that dads do, which is I run really slow with short little choppy steps until he gets ahead of me, and then to make him go faster and laugh, I'll catch up with him really, really super fast. And, and then he did something interesting, and, it, and it's, been, it's been with me, it's been with me for like a week. Instead, when he, when he seen me coming, instead of turning and running even harder, he grabbed a hold of me and did everything he could to keep me from winning. Now, that might not seem ridiculous, that might not seem unnatural, but to me, it really struck a chord with me. And then I began thinking, as a community of people, how often, when we're running the race of life, instead of turning around and running as hard as we can for the finish line, how often do we turn to those who are chasing behind us and grab them and do everything we can to make sure that they don't succeed? It doesn't matter if we win or lose so long as that person and those people don't succeed. You see it all the time. You see it all the time. And it doesn't do us any good. I mean, if you look at, again, I'm going to come back to Jesus as an example. He went out and he taught multitudes of people. He brought in, you know, 12 disciples and he had two or three that were his close confidants. Yes, he had individual relationships with them all. They were, he had friendships with each one of them. But he taught them as a group. He equipped them as a group. He sent them forward to build the church as a group. Yes, they each had their own goals and their own, their own responsibilities. But he sent them out as a group. You and I in this world, we are going to be better equipped to live in this world if we've got each other's backs, if we're working with each other. But if our only thought is, I want to stop you from getting ahead of me and then I'll try to win, I just need to keep you down so that I can win. I mean, I guess maybe it's like that old joke, you know, bear jumps out, two guys are out camping and a bear jumps out, growls at them. One guy takes off running, the other guy stops and puts on his sneakers and ties them nice and tight. The first fellow turns to his friend and says, what are you doing? The bear's almost on top of you. The second guy finished tying his, tying his, finishes tying his sneakers, he gets up and he takes off and he says, I don't have to outrun the bear, I just have to outrun you. There's a truth to that. But it's an incredibly sad truth when you think about it. It's not my job to outrun you. It's not my job to 
hold you down. It's not my job to keep you from getting ahead of me. It's my job to encourage you to get ahead of me. It's my job to equip you to be all that you are. And here's the crazy thing. It's your job to do the same for me. It's your job to do the same for your neighbor. It's my, it's just like it's my job to do the same, to do it for the people in my community. Our responsibility isn't to make sure that nobody else wins when we can't. Our responsibility is to, get to, is to help as many people cross that finish line at the best, at the best possible time they can. This isn't a zero, life isn't a zero sum game. There isn't one winner. We can all win at this game. And as a matter of fact, if we all win, we're all going to feel so much better about it. Folks, there are enough things in this world working against us. There are enough barriers for us to jump across. There are enough people, individuals, organizations, structured in such a way that they don't want us to succeed. We, you and I, don't need to add barriers in front of each other. We don't need to put obstacles in front of each other. We are, together, much better equipped to prosper in this life. Together as a team, we are much better equipped to enjoy this life and all that it has to offer. There is plenty for all of us. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord always be gracious to you. May you know the peace of being in his presence. And when you and I are running that race together, I pray you win. Amen. Thank you everybody for spending this time with me. Thank you for choosing to be here today. I pray God's blessings will be upon you. If you liked what you saw, please hit uh, the like button down below. If you'd like more of our content, hit subscribe. If there's something that you want us to talk about, if there is uh, something you want to make mention, please feel free to leave a comment. I will be praying for you. Please say a prayer for me. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless.